Give peace, O oh Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets be found true. Hear the prayers of your servants and of your people, Israel. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'd turn to each other and just acknowledge each other's existence as we welcome those across our world from Malta, the United States that we are one in Christ and to share an English factor the weather is about 19 and it is sunny but a bit chilly but you're welcome across in the body of Christ today's mass focuses on compassion and forgiveness Alleluia, alleluia, I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you, says the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother, my sister, if they wrong me? As often as seven times? Jesus answered, not seven, I tell you, but 77 times. And so the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When the reckoning began, they brought him a man who owed 10,000 talents, but he had no means of paying. So his master gave orders that he should be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions to meet the debt. At this, the servant threw himself down at his master's feet. Give me time, he said, and I will pay the whole sum. And the servant's master felt so sorry for him that he let him go and cancelled the debt. Now as this servant went out, he happened to meet a fellow servant who owed him 100 denarii. And he seized him by the throat and began to throttle him. Pay what you owe me, he said. His fellow servant fell at his feet and implored him, saying, Give me time and I will pay you. But the other would not agree. On the contrary, he had him thrown into prison till he should pay the debt. His fellow servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair to him. Then the master sent for him, You wicked servant, he said, I cancelled all that debt of yours when you appealed to me. Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And in his anger, the master handed him over to the torturers till he should pay all his debt. And that is how my heavenly father will deal with you unless you each Forgive your sister, your brother, from your heart.
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last week I shared with you about the pattern of the scriptures that are shared with us. This week we're celebrating the 24th Sunday of ordered time. There is nothing ordinary about the Eucharist. It's a mistranslation. It's ordered because it's unfolding. And in a way that reminds us continually that our lives too never stand still. We are unfolding. None of us is the same as the people we were last week. And we need to be aware that the spirit within us is calling us into relationship the God who loves us, the God who is community, Father, Son, Spirit, Mother, Daughter, Spirit, whatever formulation you want to use, each formulation can never contain God. And sometimes we give the impression somehow that God will do our bidding, that God will change his mind or her mind or the mind. But it's deeper than that. It's into what you and I would probably address as the heart. There's a huge difference between the heart and the brain. The brain is calculating, the heart is spontaneous. The Lord is compassion and love, we heard in that psalm today. Slow to anger and rich in mercy. Paul to the Romans reminds us, he says, the life and death of each of us has its influence on others. In other words, we're always connected. In fact, we need to be connected in order to live fully, more fully. That's the truth about us. But if we go back in the readings of previous weeks, we look at the relationships that Jesus is talking about with his disciples and his apostles. And how on the one hand, Peter was named as, as the one. And the next week he's known as the Satan, which reminds us of how double we all are, how it is one of those human things in us which God can use to our advantage if we recognize we need one another, needing one another who is, each of us is that beautiful creation, that beautiful in the flesh expression of ourselves through our mums and our dads. One thing we all share is a relationship. We're all sons or daughters. And it's important for us to recognize the heart of that is from within God. Sometimes I used to hear people when they come to share some things that they were concerned about and the husband or the wife might say it in my presence. But I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything. And I'm sitting there thinking, that's the problem. You didn't. And if you had a done, then you'd have been living out the gospel. Because none of us is created whole and complete. That's why Jesus elsewhere says, unless you become like a child... A little child, you cannot enter the kingdom. What does a little child do? What did we do when we were so high? We ran to mum, we ran to dad, and we thought, yes, they can solve it. Because that's how we saw our mums and dads. And for a little while, our mums and dads could, could fix anything, even if it meant popping down to the local shop and buying a new one. But then we grow out of that and we realize that our mums and dads are frail and human too. And they make mistakes, as each of us makes mistakes. And the listening, last week there was a beautiful phrase in the psalm, oh that today you would listen to his voice. Whose voice? God's voice. Why listen? 
because we listen by allowing our heart to open and expand. That beautiful heart which is in you. God has given each of us a beautiful heart. But don't expect me to be like you or you like me. But above all, we need to listen. In the story of the gospel today, haven't we got a good example of not listening? Not listening really. The servant who has forgiven his great debt was so grateful, but it stopped. That was brain. He then goes out and his fellow servant owes him a small sum. And the brain kicks in again. I've got all my debt forgiven. Now I'll have my debt from you because I'll be, I'll be rich again. Gosh, we can see that, can't we? Hello? You with me? Yes? Nod? Yes? It's so important, folks, to go beyond what we see, beyond what is going on in our lives to the heart. Because the real heart in you all, in us all, is tenderness. Just as we like to be forgiven, so we too are asked to forgive others. And I mean, that's an ups and downs thing, isn't it? Because we don't always respond to the plea of another. But that, I'd say it doesn't matter. Of course it matters, but we don't need to worry too much providing we learn from that and our heart gets bigger. I can remember many years ago, I had an uncle and there was quite a bad row in the family. And one of the brothers said, I'm never going to be hurt again. I'm not going into that sort of situation ever again. My other uncle said, I want to be hurt again. The first wanted to cut off and say that was life, but the real life was the second uncle who said, I want to be hurt again. I want to retain that, that genuineness, even if I make another mistake, trusting that God's love is in the other two, as it is in all of us. Each of us is the forgiver. Each of us can say, I forgive. I hope we can also say, I am sorry. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and glorify the Lord by the way you live. Thanks be to God.